Okay. Come on now, Magali. Banana. Normal, abnormal. Abnormal, right. Appendicitis. Those are the hard images. Thing to say. It looks like maybe there's some dirt. There is. So there's thick and bowel loops. And there is some shadow. And there's some shadow with like probably like probably like, like on yeah, top perfect. like on top it looks more like a bowel loop with thick and mm. wall and then underneath hot fat and possibly an appendix cutting. I agree. Yeah. Or a fecund. Who knows? So this is showing an appendicitis. Now whether this is could it be like this or not. It's abnormal enough that it would prompt you to get the comprehensive yeah. anyway. So um, it's just to highlight that it can take on different appearances. Okay, so I think both teams won that one. And that's oh. just to highlight that, you know, it is a difficult scan, but um, the more normals and abnormals that you see, the more your eyes will get used to picking up the, the findings and um, it becomes easier as you go. But it is sometimes tricky because there could be a lot of mimics. So let's go through some of them. What is this clip trying to highlight? So you see that structure there, that's the circular. Cauliflower. You may you may be tempted to say, oh, is that appendicitis? It looks a bit distended. Is it the marker or something? No. Yeah. Um, here. Mm -hmm. This structure here that's circular in the middle of the screen. I don't see it like on the no point. Like with but what do you guys think? Appendicitis, not no. appendicitis? Mm -hmm. Too much things inside. No, right. So there's some, um, there's these kind of um, rugae within it. There's, um, it's, if you follow it, you can see that it become it drains into another part. Um, it's not a blind end. Um, it has maybe even peristalsis if you just um, stay still on top of it. So all these features point toward this being just small bowel versus appendicitis. What is underneath by the end of the clip? Look, look, look. Here. Mm. See the end, like you have a kind yeah. of digit stru digital structure that yeah. comes. Maybe there's so normal appendix. It's hard to know. I think uh, we yeah. would have to follow the structure more to be able to tell. But there's not a lot of secondary findings, although I agree that with that area probably needs a bit more interrogation to be sure. Here's another clip. What do you guys think? So there are there's a very it's very thickened mm -hmm. bow loop that looks like the terminal ilium according to I mean, the anatomy. And there are some So Pedro, you're saying that it looks like a terminal ilium. How do you know that what what is the distinguishing feature from TI from um, appendix appendix? <laughs> Royal content? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, contact and uh, it's terminal ilium. It doesn't supposed to be like a blind and lumen. Mm -hmm. And if I will track him down, I was supposed to see him connects him into the second to the electrical valve. And I think we see like in the end, like the dirty shadow that starts to appear. Yeah. When it's diving into the second. Uh, uh, but there's also like some I think hot fat in the right side. And yeah. by the way, that I don't. I think maybe it's lymph nodes, like yeah, on the right. Yeah. Um, could it be like an IBD? I'm just um, no, saying something. It's still like a very abnormal scan. Yeah. So, as always, right again. Um, so, this is an example of terminal ileitis. As you can see, it's in this, around the same area, so it could sometimes be confusing. But um, there's rugation along the thickened bowel, um, the bowel wall. Um, there's a lot of content within it, and it's draining into the, the, the large intestine. Um, and so um, it can, can sometimes be confusing, but some of these features can help you distinguish um, terminal ileitis from appendicitis. 
Um, and you also have to consider the, the presentation of the child as well. So um, as we know, TI can be caused by various different things. Um, it can be IBD, Crohn. It could be um, different infections like Yersinia, or TB. So um, you just have to put it into the right clinical context. Here's another example of what terminal oeliitis can look like. More obvious at the beginning of the clip there, mm -hmm. where you see the thickened bowel, uh, bowel wall with some rotations. If you follow it, you will probably see it drain into the large intestine. Not exactly a blind end as you would expect for appendicitis. Okay, here's another mimic. What do you guys think? Lymph See, there's a bunch of lymph nodes above the psoas. Yeah, exactly. So this is mesenteric adenitis, um, and the, the radiologic criteria would be three or more lymph nodes that's clustered in the right lower quadrant, measuring more than five millimeters in diameter. Um, not something that we typically um, call at the bedside because you do you can get lymph nodes with appendicitis as well. Um, but when you see this and like no other secondary signs, um, it may be more reassuring for you that um, it is just lymph nodes causing the pain. Um, but um, it, it is possible that you do have lymph nodes with an inflamed appendix as well. So you do want to interrogate that area to the best of your abilities. Here's another example of mesenteric adenitis where you see lymph nodes coming into view there. Would you guys diagnose that? Typically, could we? we uh, would we? I saw only one doctor, pointed care doctor, with a lot of balls to diagnose <laughs> it. His name is Marcus. <laughs> I never met him. Yeah. And, like, I and, and not, I mean, and not too old, like a comprehensive hearing sick. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. So it was. Would we recognize it? Like maybe if we're lucky, but then rely on that for our diagnosis? No. So, more. <laughs> yeah. Ten years old. Yeah. Exactly. What do we see here? Complex collection. Or. Noriensis. Yeah. So ovarian pathologies can definitely mimic appendicitis as well. So in the right age group, in the right population, that might be another differential. Um, this is showing in hemorrhagic cysts. It could definitely be a, com a complex collection as well. If you see this, it would probably prompt you to get more comprehensive imaging. Here's another example of an ovarian pathology. Um, in this case, it's ovarian torsion. And this one? It's like a blood of obstruction. Well, it's a kidney. It yeah, it's it's, it's like the kidney. So hydro ureter yeah, um, like can it. also be a mimic. Um, so if they're having pain, it can be around that area. No. Um, and so just to be mindful that even if it's right lower quadrant pain, um, if you take a look, you may not see the appendix, but you may see other clues of what uh, that points towards the final diagnosis. And what's this? Uh, oh, our little friend. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I don't think I would yeah. be able to make the diagnosis just seeing on the first time, but... Um, Something very common that you see. It's like, very uh, common. This yeah. is a Meckel staph oh, Very um, common. That yes. was yeah, right? Very common. When he was, when we were just doing our scanning shift. So, um, maybe surprise what you see. So, how uh, th that kid story was, I think, I'm a teenager that already had an ultrasound and they told us that it's normal and we just scan him for our enjoyment. And then we saw that, like, we weren't sure what it is, but we had Mark yeah, as so well. We, so, yes. Yeah. Basically, basically. So, yes. <laughs> so basically, like we see some kind of yeah, yeah. Michelle. Will so describe like it. a fluid containing structure. This is, this was more peri umbilical rather than right lower quadrant. Um, it had a bit of um, a, like a cystic appearance to it. There's some thickened wall around it, and that air towards the end 
um, prompted Mark to think about uh, mycosa particulum. Um, typically, if it's strictly um, a cyst, you shouldn't see air. But again, it's just one of the interesting cases that we wanted to include. Definitely, probably beyond the scope of point of view ultrasound. But just to point out that you know, if you do when you the more scans that you do, the more you'll pick up um, on things that look a bit unusual to you, prompting you to do more testing and benefit the patient.